Hey there, and welcome to JSA TV. I'm Dean Perrine, and we're about to have some fun. Way back in the time of dinosaurs, Fred Flintstone had a foot-powered car. Back to the Future promised us a future with flying cars, and today, while we don't have flying cars just yet, we do have autonomous vehicles. And it seems we're finally creating some of the truly innovative technology that was once only dreamed about. Today, I welcome back my friend, Mr. Matthias Friedstrom. Matthias is Telia Carrier's chief evangelist. And while he didn't create or uh, invent autonomous vehicles, Matthias has a unique perspective and insight on how important backbone networks are to the application of new technologies across multiple interest, uh, industries like finance, manufacturing, gaming, cloud, um, uh, among many, many others. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Matthias, welcome back to JSA TV. It's good to see you this morning. Yeah, thank you very much, Dean. You bet. So Matthias, I'm going to jump right in with the questions. Um, let's let's um, help our viewers connect some dots first. Um, migration to the cloud, content delivery, cloud gaming, enterprise collaboration, all of those kinds of applications. You know, what's really behind those applications um, and how those technologies ultimately operate? Yeah, no, I think that's a good question. And, and absolutely, a, a couple of years ago, like five more years ago, uh, a lot of companies had their servers in their own basement and, and half of their companies with IT engineers running those servers. And I think a lot of those companies felt, you know, that's not the core business of what they do. Uh, and cloud is not a new thing, really, but cloud then really came and replaced this. And, and companies can now put more or less all their applications and their content in the cloud and therefore focus on their core business. And I think the way that the public internet now connects all these clouds makes almost everything going towards the cloud. I think, you know, the gamers and everything should be in the cloud because it's a much better way of running your, your operations. You know, you don't need to think about that. Someone else will do that for you. Very good. Um, so let, let, let's talk about um, let's talk about how uh, efficiency and, and, the, and the true um, kind of robustness of, of the network, especially when we're talking about um, optimizing networks for things like zero uh, zero downtime and, 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 and ultra low latency, things like that. It can be a real headache for IT teams, as you know. But regardless of the industry they're in, um, you know, why don't, why don't you talk a little bit about how, how uh, Telia's backbone network can be leveraged to solve for the, these extreme network demands? Yeah, no, I think that's a good question. And I think what, what these enterprise companies needs to start to think about is really, you know, what type of criticality do they have to the traffic they have? Because not everything can be super critical. There are for sure some traffic that absolutely cannot go down. And for that service providers like us can provide three or four different routes into the cloud. But there are other parts of your network where you don't need this super low latency or criticality. And for that type of, there are many better solutions and cheaper solutions like the public internet to connect these ones. So I think what's important for, for data centers these days to think about, you know, the criticality of the traffic, you know. Gamers, for instance, you know, if, if you have low latency and bad latency in gaming, you might die. So for them, <laughs> latency is very important. But for other type of traffic, it's not important. So I think everyone needs to go back you know, in the past, everyone bought the same for everything, regardless of criticality or traffic. That needs to change. People need to think about, you know, what do I need to protect and what can, you know, work as best effort. Very good. So in some cases, I guess it truly is life and death, at least in the virtual world. Um, but so, so, so much of uh, what we do today depend, <clears throat> excuse me, depends on the cloud. Um, um, IIS, I, IAAS, easy for me to say, right? SaaS applications, virtualization, deep learning, things like that. But what do cloud providers need to pay attention to when uh, looking for network solutions that will ultimately help them meet end user demand? I think they should look at, you know, how are they connected to the public internet and, and where are they connected and located? I think, you know, uh, many of the cloud providers are building more and more data centers and they should because there is an appetite for cloud that's sort of never ending right now. But they all really need to start to think about their connectivity. Uh, I know some clouds are put in some locations where there is really no connectivity and a cloud without connectivity is pretty useless. So talk to their service providers, look, look for where the networks are and that's where they should build their clouds. And then obviously, 
sustainability is becoming an issue in this world and, and these data centers are actually consuming enormous amounts of power. So that's something they should start to think about as well, you know, where to locate my cloud and, it, and make sure. I know there are tons of locations in the United States where it's ideal to have a cloud with because power is green and cheap, but those places are not perfect for a connectivity. So think about both, you know, where should it be located and how is the connectivity built to that place? Excellent. I, I love that answer. Um, so I'm not a gamer myself, but I do have some friends and, and we ha even have some, uh, some JSAers who are, are big gamers. And I was told that Battlefield 2042 um, and other revolutionary games are coming out this fall um, and, and in, the, uh, in the near future. Um, additionally, demand for high definition streaming across all kinds of devices, especially mobile devices, continued to skyrocket as, as we all know. But how, how do you see the content delivery sectors, networks, um, their needs evolving to meet future bandwidth and latency demands? Yeah, no, that, that's a very interesting question. And these networks are extremely important. We've decided on our side not to build one because we want to support the ones out there. And we felt, you know, let's make sure they're super well connected and so on. But I think the most key thing for these CDNs around the world is to figure out, you know, how do they get closer to the end users? Uh, there is something called the edge. Uh, the edge is where the, every network is ending. And that one is creeping out closer and closer to end users. And especially in the gaming world, and you want this ultra low latency in every game, you know, they need to start to think about, you know, where is my data stored, you know? Uh, in the past, you could have one big data center in Europe and one in the US, and that could support the entire continent. Today, you need to store content very, very local. And I think that's the most important thing for these guys to think about, you know, do they need to be in 15 places in every state in the US instead of one place? Mm -hmm. That type of stuff, you know, the edge is going to be very, very important. And where they locate their data is going to be critical to their success. Excellent. Thank you, Matthias. Um, final question. On your website, these words stand out. The model only works when the network is so seamless, it's invisible. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what this phrase means to you and how it informs the wide portfolio of internet, cloud, networking, and voice and mobile data services uh, that you all offer. Yeah, no, you're right. In, in some way, we don't want to be seen really, you know, because the network should be seamless. It should just be there, you know. People shouldn't think about who they connect and where they connect and where they are. They should just connect and it should work. The, and and, and the, that's the way we want to operate. We want to be in the background. We want our customers to be able to upgrade or downgrade or change whatever they need. But we don't want them really to think about the quality and everything. In, in some way, we don't even want to talk to them. You know, Our dream is that they're, it's just working. The customers are just consuming our services and everyone is happy. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, The less discussed it is about the network performance, the better it is for us because then it obviously works. So in some way, you know, we don't want people to say hooray when it works, but at the same time, you know, that's a good sign because then it typically works when no one talks about it. So that's kind of what we talk about not being seen. I love it, I love it. Matthias, thank you very much for being with us today. It's always a pleasure uh, talking with you. Um, so uh, again, thank you for your time this morning. Yeah, thank you very much. You bet, you bet. And by the way, if you missed my first chat with Matthias about internet connectivity, I encourage you to grab the link in this video description and tune into that one.